sure there will be pressure from certain institutions based on what others are doing. And to be honest with you, it, in terms of students being on, on campus, if, say in, in the PAC-12 camp uh, the conference, if there's like a number of schools that aren't going to be on the campus, I would just guess that the rest of them won't be either. Right. Um, they're not going to have any athletics going on. No. No. They're going to they're going to enroll for their classes and they're going to do them online. Um, so, you know, if you get we have a lot of college swimmers. We had twenty see we have twenty seniors graduating seniors this year. Junior. I'm not sure how many of them are actually going to be on their campus in September. Yeah. Right. Are some of them doing gap years? Well, not, yeah, because they have, I don't know. Oh, you mean like they, they're deciding not to enroll? Right. No, I, I right. think all of the swimmers that we have that are going to schools, and it, it is across the country. We have 20 graduating seniors. We have people from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. And hmm. every one of them want, have a, want to be on campus, right? They, they, they're, they want to be starting their uh, college career in September. Um, sure. And I guess it'll be either virtual learning or or camp be on the campus but uh you know there you know when you hear the scientists talk about the spike right in in the fall possibly mm. i think uh, these college in institutions are listening to that and saying yeah. you know what and you know you heard about notre dame right notre dame is gonna what did we read about that they're gonna go to go to classes but be start early and be done by it's thanksgiving Finish early, yeah. Yeah, finish early. Um, for that I've semester. heard of a couple institutions doing that. Kind of Everybody's got to get creative. Almost, almost yep. quarters. Absolutely. So to speak. So let's uh, let's wait a little bit longer here. We get a, get a few more people to sign on. We're we're at about half of who's registered has actually right. joined in so far. Yeah. I think that's yeah, all right. Pretty close, right on it. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Uh, and hopefully we don't have any lag to this video. Um, when, when, you did when, it on start small, when you did it on the small screen, Kevin, it, it worked pretty well. Yeah, okay. Well, and Scott, if you'd let me know too, if... I'll, I'll jump you in. You know, because there's a couple things that I wanted to like stop in the middle and just talk to Mike about. And sure. uh, if it's lagging, let me know and I'll just let it run and we'll figure it out. Sure, I'll do that. All right. All right, well, what do you guys say? Should we get going? Sure. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott Kitzman. I'd like to welcome you to this week's uh, Swim Cloud webinar. Uh, we're pleased to have a special guest, Mike Parado, with us today. Also on this call is Coach Kevin Cano. Uh, he's one of my coworkers at Swim Cloud. He's a famed high school coach from Chesterton, Indiana, and also coached at the Duneland Swim Club. So uh, I give you Coach Kevin. Take it away, Kevin. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm excited here to introduce and, and have Mike Prado uh, as part of this. Today, we're, we're gonna do uh, a breakdown of Reagan Smith's uh, 100 back from Des Moines. And Mike is the head coach of the Riptide Swim Team in Minnesota, um, Reagan's coach. He, he's a 2019 inductee to the ASCA Hall of Fame, and in 2019, he was also the ASCA Coach of the Year. So probably best known, though, for, you know, working with Olympian uh, Jenny Thompson and now current world record holder, Reagan Smith. So um, thank you for coming and uh, welcome, Mike. Hey, Kevin, it's great to be here. Um, I um, really enjoy doing these kinds of things because it's 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 stuff that you can go over you know in the office and then take it to the pool and, and then try to uh, exactly. improve about improve all these things um with the training sets that you can create and um it's amazing how the athletes buy into it too they they want to find out different ways to be faster um you're not always going in the pool and doing you know fast 100s every day you know you're you're doing you're breaking down swims you're doing portions of races, and and that's really where you can work on these details in practice. Yeah, and we're hoping to give to give people some of that and some things that maybe they can work on when they get back. You know, I know Mike from when he was coaching at Indiana um, a few years back, but he's been successful everywhere he's gone. And I, I got to tell you though, Mike, I, I've always really admired 
your professionalism on the deck, uh, the culture that your kids have. Um, it really is a credit to you. So I, I'm excited to get your take on, on preparing Reagan for the swim. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen a little bit. And bear with me for a second. So I'm going to use uh, the Swim Cloud software. And this is easy. This is a YouTube video of her swim from uh, her 100 back from Des Moines. Obviously, this is a long course. And I'm using the Swim Cloud software because it's so simple. You can use it with anything. And it gives us the metrics. But before I play this, I want to explain what these bars mean just a little bit so that those of you that have never aren't familiar with this can know it. And then we're going to get Mike's take on some of this. So this first bar is the first 50 of the 100 back. The second bar is the second 50. And as I play this video, and uh, Reagan is in lane four over here, um, right there. So you, as this video is plays, you'll see a cursor go across here. And it's just going to be going in rhythm with the data. And it's, it's how kids uh, learn, we feel. But this long bar here, this blue bar, is the underwater. And it's going to represent the start, the underwater to the breakout. So the blue portion just gives us those metrics. The distance that, that she traveled underwater, the time it took her to get there, and then the velocity. Each of these dots represent a stroke cycle. And you know, in backstroke, we're doing one hand hit to that same hand hit. And that's gonna give us our uh, amount of cycles. It's gonna give us our distance per cycle and then our velocity. And it's also gonna give us our stroke rate. So that's those dots there. The 15 meter time, um, the little purple there is the, the turn. And for backstroke, it's when her head drops to the feet push. And then the same thing coming back underwater to surface. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this first and I'm gonna leave the TV announcers on, I think. It'll give it some excitement and, and everybody will understand a little bit about what this is. And then I wanna get Mike's take on how he prepares her for this. So let's go ahead and play this. Again, this is her. Right here. Good turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was this was a really great race. Um, yeah, outstanding people here from the USA and and um, a preview at this point before things kind of closed down later that week, actually, um, of the Olympic trials that was to be held in June of this year. But um, everybody there was looked primed to go at this particular meet in Des Moines, and it, it was a preview of, like, like I said, what trials would look like. Uh, yeah, tremendous swim. I, I'm. Uh, the, I, I kind of chose this video because it was, um, you know, kind of mid-season. It was kind of current, and she did so many good things here. Her underwater, um, and, and that turn is just incredible. And, and we're and we're going to talk about all of that. If very good. Yeah, if you, I'm looking at your. You the could. I'm going to play this both, again with just you part. talking. Sure, sure. When I when I what I really like here is that the breakout time is really fantastic. Okay, we're at six point zero. You have there, uh, the distance is good, and we're talking about one meter short of the mark, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Just a little bit under that, at almost fourteen meters. Um, but everybody in this final here gets off about the same way. Um, but when when we're preparing. Uh, those are the details that we want to work on, right? You, you have to, underwater is, is you get 15 meters, you have to make it fast, you have to make it efficient. And if you do it the right way, you're actually saving energy for the rest of the race, right? Um, if you really have to struggle to get off the, the wall and your underwaters are not efficient, it just takes something away from what you're going to do later in the race. Um, when I look at your 
your the second bar that you've created here, and then mm -hmm. breakout time is three is six point three, which is still really great. Unbelievable. Um, but she gets over thirteen meters, thirteen almost thirteen and a half um, underwater. So she stayed under. The tempo kicks were very very good, and if you when She's you so see, patient. Yeah. Right. And and. Again, that's the, none of that happens by mistake, right? Those are things that you try to do and practice on a consistent basis. Um, she's very, very good at those details. Um, they, these were not automatic details. These are things that you work on and work on over time. So it's not something that you do once in a while. It's something you're doing all the time. Um, what is, when, as far as the, as far as that kick go, goes, and as I, I'm going to play this, and I've turned the sound out, and here she is. You see the tempo of that kick. And then right there, they're, you know, at, uh, just about 14 meters right. breaking out. Do you have a kick count that you work on? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that you that's, do. that's a very good question. I typically, I ask her all the time, we'll do it in the warm up, but she's, it, it, the best thing to do is do those kind of things with the suit on, right? With the tech suit so you prepare there's no um question about how many kicks you want to take she's typically i don't know how many you have there how many you wrote I, it, basically she's about 12 to 13 kicks underwater to get to that point in the race from the wall yeah. to the first mark and uh, she's about the same thing off the 50 turn so yes it's not a matter of like oh i think you know you have this we don't really have this designated, hey, we're going to do 12 kicks each time. It's not that way. She takes what she needs to do. She's aware of where the mark is. If it's 12, 13 kicks, if it's 14 kicks, I guess that's just a higher tempo. That's probably does, a little bit more excited. But. Is that because you demand her to do that in practice? So we she, will, it's yeah, such we, a good feel? Yeah, well, you know, we'll do underwater 25s kick. So we're not just doing it to 15 every time. Uh -huh. So that'll be a set. And, and you know, that's just for breath control purposes, right? If you can do 25, you can do 15. Oh, sure. You know, and, and if you do enough of those, you can control it to the 15 and not make it feel like it's, uh, you know, you're losing oxygen, you know, for the rest of the swim, right? Um, but if you, if you look at this particular race, the, the one great thing about this swim was how she got into the 50 wall. Um, she really set up the wall nicely and she stayed under for, you know, 13 and a half meters. And then, you know, probably one of the biggest differences in the race heading into the second 50, right? Um, it's so like she builds the entire race. Yeah, I, yeah, and somebody asked me, when you asked me about tempo, there, I don't think the tempo is the same everywhere, right? I think it adjusts. Um, so she comes off this wall, she got deep enough. It's one of the best turns I've seen her do in season without rest. Um, and if you see, she just stayed under longer than everybody else for the most part and did it with speed. Exactly. Um, so she was getting to that, your breakout time there is 6.3. That's outstanding. Not coming from the block. I mean, that's <laughs> coming from the turn wall. Yeah. And, and, and that is, that shows you practice. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think this is where, you know, and again, I don't think it's natural for anybody. I think these are things you have to work on. I mean, when she was younger, it was, um, it wasn't those, those kinds of walls in practice. And, and I'll tell you a story that about um, three years, four years ago at the Junior National West meet, uh, Ryan Huffer was swimming in that meet. And uh, he, he was going 41 Three, I think, 41-2 maybe, in the 100 freestyle. And he was swimming 60 yards of that, if not more, right, underwater. Yeah. So I grab him out. He warms down, and I grab him out of the warm-down pole, and I say, what are you doing? And, and he says, I said, are you doing that in, in training sets? Are you doing that when you were learning it? Were you just doing it in 25s and things like that? How were you doing? And he says, yeah, in the beginning, we were learning the technique and and how we wanted to do things but ultimately we got to doing that in every training set that we were doing and i just thought that is really difficult to do 
But, you know, the result for that guy in high school was to swim a 41 low in the 100 yard free. <laughs> and, and, you know, so it, you go back to the practice pool and you say there's somewhere you have to um, discipline that breath control, you know, on a daily basis, some, some way, somehow. Yeah, I, I try to get the kids to understand. And if you look at my cursor here, the difference of velocity, if you can hold it close to 15 meters versus on the surface, you know, right. it, it's faster because of your no, coming no off some solid, uh, solid object. There's so, no doubt. If you, you know, what, what's the, the, we try to use it, you know, two, two dolphin kicks underwater is going to be faster than one cycle every single time. Mm -hmm. So if you can use the distance that you're allowed to be underwater effectively, you're going to be faster than swimming a cycle at the surface. Yeah. And, you know, getting to, getting to cycles on here, um, thing that jumps out at me is, you know, the same cycle count, uh, on both fifties, just right. very consistent. Consistency is the name of this swim. That's one of the things that really jumped out at me. And she has just about the same distance per cycle, two Holy meters here, 2.03 here. Yeah, she's very, she's very efficient with her stroke technique. Um, I, I know everybody talks about her head position. That's, she's been doing that since she was a 10 and under. Mm -hmm. So she has that, that down for sure. But I think it's, it's, the pull pattern is very effective. It's the same every cycle. And, you know, ultimately you want to be able to train in a way that you can do that. So um, one of the things over the years that I heard from the coaches that I idolized, uh, you know, when I was a younger coach was being able to train if you're going to do a hundred meter event in, in training, you're going to train under that distance, you're going to train at that distance, and you're going to train over that distance and try to be consistent in all three of those things. And I, I think um, you work on speed points in, in any of those uh, distances of training. Do you, um, you know, certainly you ask them to count cycles and you have some sets. Do Absolutely. You, Offhand, yeah, one you know, of the any that we'll examples do, that you? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're you know when we're working with the whole group, right? It, it, um, so Fridays would typically be kick day or or um, drill day, or and, and another day we'll do stuff like this. We'll go a series of twenty fives where they're working on their kick count from the wall and their and then their stroke count, uh -huh. and we'll do a number of those so it's consistent. They're doing the same kicks and the same cycles for each twenty five. And say we're doing we're doing those on 25 seconds, and then we'll go 50s doing the same thing where we want to hold the same kick count from both walls and the same stroke count, and and do those on 50 seconds, and then we'll do 75s and try to stretch it out to, again same number of kicks off the wall, same number of cycles to the to the turn, and do those for 75s on 115. So all of those are just that's the same exact. Um, you know, pace per 25, we're just extending it so you can hold it over a distance. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, you talked about technique in uh, one of these, they give an underwater shot. Let's see if I can find it. Um, let this play. But she has a, a nice um, catch early and a lot of elbow bend. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't know if it, she, she has, um, her elbows are a little hyperextended. Oh. Okay. If you if you look at her uh, coming towards you um, into oh. a wall, then you you can see some of that. But um, her entry point is right at the shoulder line. It's very consistent that way, and she she drives her hands down extremely well and catches very well. Yeah, yeah. And is some of that. I wanted to touch on and talk to you about strength training a little bit. In another interview, I heard you talk about that she got with a uh, CrossFit instructor. Absolutely. And I was wondering it was a big uh, difference. if that has a lot to do with her distance per cycle that she gets. Um, I, you know, I'm going to say that she, again, I think she's a very efficient swimmer. I think her technique is very good. 
that mm-hmm. strength training just enhanced all of those details. Uh-huh. So about a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, she got with this trainer and I think the trainer, um, one of the goals was to make sure there was balance on both sides because that's what swimming is, right? Everything symmetrical in swimming or we want it to be that way. And I think that kind of dry land training transferred to the pool extremely well for Reagan. Um, it's all about more reps and things like that. She's not doing any literal weight training. She's doing uh, CrossFit training in a way where she's working different muscle groups. Um, again, balance is the key, right? And, and she, over time, got stronger at the right time for herself. Uh-huh. It wasn't, I remember a few years back talking to Keenan Robinson at USA Swimming about doing the proper dry land at the right age. And I, I didn't want, I wanted to do age appropriate dry land for her, not something too much too soon. And I, I thought um, we were a little bit careful with that, but the, uh, the CrossFit training really, really helped. And I'm not sure it's literally CrossFit all the way. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, carry over to other areas, but, but the, the, the trainer is, a, she's a uh, CrossFit athlete and she trains uh, CrossFit athletes as well. And I, it's just worked out tremendously for Reagan. Hey, and, gentlemen, mind if, mind if yeah. I hop in with a question from the audience? Coach Kershaw. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, Coach Andrew Kershaw would like to know um, from Mike, what, what type of kickouts does she do in different types of sets, say an aerobic free set or 200 pace, 100 speed, non-backstroke? Uh, you know, do yeah, you require yeah, different- That's a good question. That's, that's a good coach question. I mean, if we're going to do fast 50s or 25s, 50s or 75s, then the kickouts are going to be the, the kick counts. Is that what we're talking about? Those are going to be a little bit more. So we're going to try to get to the mark every time we come off a wall. Um, if she's doing something longer than that, and I, and I can't tell you we do that too often, but when we do that, it's the, she's not going to be going 12 or 13 kicks off of a wall. It's going to be in her 200 backstroke where, um, and I'd have to go back and look at this film, but she, she, uh, not this past year, the year before, about a year ago, right? She went um, 147, one in the 200 back. And I want to say that those were eight kicks off of every wall there. Uh, so that's still pretty good. And when you're talking about all the turns in the, in the 200, being able to maintain that over 200. And the speed was good too. It wasn't just doing eight kicks to do the kicks. It was kicks with the purpose. So the tempo was very good. Excellent. I, I, I hope that answers the question. I, I think so. I- so I think so. So Go ahead. is there anything, you know, um, we talked about uh, cycle count and being consistent in the distance per cycle. Um, do you do much tempo work or do you kind of let the, the cycles and the, and the race take care of it? Right. I, I very rarely do like tempo work. I know what it is. So I'll tell her in a hundred meter race, like at Des Moines, I say, look, I'm going to take your tempo, uh, your rate for at three points in the first 50 and three points in the second 50. I want her to be aware of what it is, but she's very, very good with that. She's always had a high tempo. Um, and as you can see for, I mean, she's pretty much 1.1, which is very, very good. Yeah. And she's able to maintain that. So, um, I don't, I really like stroke count a little bit better. Um, but you know, they, they go hand in hand without a doubt. It's just the way it is. If you're efficient with your stroke count, right. And you're in your tempo, you're able to hold it. Um, then you're going to be pretty fast. And so she's, again, I think she's naturally good with the rate. Um, and I'm interested in the stroke counts and her stroke counts over the last year have been very consistent as well. Um, she's typically a little under 20 cycles on the, first 50 and she's right around 20. I mean, a little bit more, maybe a cycle, cycle and a half more on the second 50, but still pretty good. Very consistent. Yeah. And, and I noticed that it's that way in the 200 back as well. Uh, yeah. Just real yeah. consistent all the very way through. Consistent. I mean, even, even butterfly, she's very, very good about stroke counts and she's aware of that too. So, you know, I might say to her, I remember one race a little the year before, as, as this was in butterfly and I'd say, you know, that wasn't too bad here and there. And she says, yeah, I took one extra stroke that I shouldn't have taken on this 50. And she's, so she's very aware of it. And yeah. um, 
I, I think you have to be. So in training, if you can get used to doing that more and more and more, you, you learn a lot more about yourself and, and what you need to do to improve that. Yeah. Yep. Do you do you use equipment and what kind of equipment do you use? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty basic. I mean, we use fins, we use a buoy, we use a snorkel. Um, paddles are out optional in our team on our team. Uh, I have people who like them. I have people who don't use them. Um, uh, I like fins almost on a daily basis. We don't over, we don't overly do it. So our fin set it could be anywhere from 600 to 1200 yards in any one practice, depending on the length of our practice. And, um, we'll do a lot of underwater work with the fins for sure. We do a lot of fast kicking with fins. Mm -hmm. um, so we value kicking without a doubt. Um, whether it's underwater, whether it's at the surface, or whether it's with equipment. And you said depending on the, the length of your practice. Right. Um, um, we have eight, it, during the school year, we have eight practices per week. Um, so we double only on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and those practices are only 70 minutes. We have, out of the eight practices, only three of those practices, a Tuesday and Thursday p.m. and a Saturday a.m. workout. Only those three practices are in excess of 90 minutes in the pool. Um, all the other practices are somewhere between 70 and 90 minutes swimming. So those morning practices before school are pretty compact, um, as are the Monday, Wednesday, Friday p.m. practices, which are held after our dry land sessions. So we have a two and a half hour practice. Um, you know, we could be 45 minutes in the dry land room, get back to the pool, change, get in and be about a maximum of 90 minutes. Uh, even our Fridays are 15 minutes less. So we're only going 75 minutes on a Friday afternoon in the pool. Wow. And that typically is either skill day, kick day. Um, you know, when we're doing starts, turns, drills, things like that. Do, do you, uh, do you do technique drills? Like, do you build it into warm up every day? Do you, how, how do you take care of that? Yeah, it, basically, whatever we're doing in the first part of the practice is a giveaway to what the main set's going to be. So, it, in any warm up or initial part of our practice, there'll be some drilling. And if it says best stroke drilling, you know it's going to be a stroke lane day. If it says if it's there's more freestyle drilling, it's going to be a general free day for all of our groups. Um, it, if it's I am drilling, we're doing all of the strokes, then they can pretty much know that I am swimming is coming. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think you prepare for your main set with what you do in the beginning of every practice. Yeah. And, and do you, um, you know, do you cycle your quality work in throughout the week or how, how do you do that? Or do you have a yeah. Yeah, main I, I, you know, I, that's, day? That's a very good question. I, I, I think, um, We rotate where we go. We, we try to do something fast every day, right? Whether it's kicking, pulling, sw stroke swimming, freestyle swimming. But I don't necessarily keep it that consistent. We will do stroke lanes once or twice a week in the, uh, in the school year and probably definitely two or maybe even three times a week in the summer wow. where they're doing their best you know, strokes. So distance people in these lanes, butterflies here, backstrikers there. Um, but... I think we mix it, what we'll do on a weekly basis, we try to cover everything. So one day we're gonna be doing distance training, right? Another day we're gonna do some IM training. Uh, we're gonna do best stroke training, we're gonna do sprint training. So everybody gets something, ev everything on a weekly basis. We try to cover it all each week. Yeah, uh, and, and you have, that's what gives everybody what they need, you know? Right. So. Right, and I think, you know, they're developing, right? These are high school students or, or, or age swimmers. And I even I believe that college swimmers are still developing, right? I mean, they're getting recruited, yeah. and they, and, and, but I still think they're, they're still trying to be faster every year they're in school too. So I don't know if you just decide that, you know, hey, I'm a sprinter and I only sprint. Well, I don't know, what do you mean by only sprint? What other work are you doing? Are you just only doing that? Probably not if you want to keep improving, right? You're going to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And as you get into college, you specialize a little bit more. Right. But, you will. Yeah, you will I agree. Because that's why you're there. <laughs> exactly. So, Mike, um, 
I, I also wanted, I, I know you're one of the few uh, states that were able to get in. You guys right. got in the water uh, this Monday. We, so you, you're kind of in the fire now. Yeah. And I wanted to, to see if you would kind of share your thoughts and your plan going forward. Absolutely. How that's going. So this, today was day number four. As a matter of fact, day number four is still going on. Um, <laughs> we have 340 swimmers that signed up to to do our initial phase one uh, of coming back and, and being active swimmers again. And so we swim, our pool is active from 5.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night. And we are swimming one swimmer per lane. Um, the practices are not very long. So for my group, uh, our senior group is going 75 minutes. It really turns out to be a 70 minute practice, but it, you get them out and that way you can get the next group right in. Um, so we literally do it the now you're entire going day. One, so our one, or one to a lane? One to a lane right now, and we swim at opposite ends. So when they get in the pool, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go over some of this stuff. I, I have it written down here, but so these are the procedures. Uh, basically, when you come in, there's going to be a check-in person, and you're going to answer, you need to answer no to a couple of questions about, you know, have you been sick recently or have you come into contact with anyone that's been sick? And you answer no to those questions. They actually take your temperature. There's a lobby before we get to the pools and we have numbers, lane numbers on the, on the floor of the lobby. They're about 10 feet apart. And so they sign in, they, get, they check in, they wait there. They only have their parka, they have their suit on, they have their cap and goggles, no equipment right now. Um, and they have a mask on, right? Then we have the check-in person leads them to the pool that they're going to swim. They, um, they put their stuff down at a designated spot in the pool area, and then they go to their lane. And what we're doing is the, 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 the even lanes are at the deep end of the pool. The odd lanes are at the shallow end of the pool. That way we have, a, we have spacing like that. Um, after four days, I can honestly say the kids have it down extremely well. They, we asked them to be, number one, very serious about entering the building. Um, they, they can only get in the building five minutes before their designated practice time. Um, and as soon as the practice is over, they go to the bleacher, they get their stuff, and they still maintain that spacing. And then they leave through, uh, through the back door of the building, not the door they entered in, because that's where the next group of swimmers are coming in. So there's never really anybody crossing each other's path. And no locker rooms. No locker rooms, no showers. You come in with your suit on, you leave with your suit on. Um, the administration at Riptide did a tremendous job and put a lot of time and effort into putting those procedures in place. Um, we, want to, we want our families to have as much confidence um, in what we're trying to do to keep people safe. And that includes our check-in staff, our swimmers and our coaches. No parents come into the building during the practice session. Mm -hmm. Um, so by having 340 of our swimmers sign up, I feel like our, our swimmers were so ready to come back and swim. They really wanted to get back in the pool. Yeah. Uh, we do have some people who decided not to, um, sign up right away. And, and certainly that's their, you know, prerogative to do so. And maybe in the future they'll want to, um, yeah. but, but by having that many swimmers says, you know, we're trying to do a good job. We've had not one email or anything uh, about the procedures that we put in place everybody takes it very seriously and i i can honestly say i know it's only been four days but i i feel good about where we are and um, i'm not sure how long phase one will last um phase two might where where we'll go to two to a lane or whatever we we think is the right thing to do at that point but um right now we're getting to train it's not very much but they are in the pool yeah, and, and, you know, you hear, I've watched some webinars um, that people have put on and USA Swimming put on and, and everybody's, you know, worried about, oh, we're so behind and, you know, yeah. all, all this kind of stuff. And I mean, don't you feel like it's more, let's do skill work, let's do technique work Absolutely. and that's going to take care of itself? Absolutely. And, I, you know, I, I, while we had the break, right, while, while we were, you know, all the restrictions were in place in our state. Um, on a weekly basis, I wrote an email to our group, and I think a lot of our coaches did, and 
I basically said, guys, when we return to the pool, we're not going to, no meets are, you know, in front of us right away. Let's just focus on skills. Let's focus on, on training. And, and I think if you can carry that on over a period of time, then our swimmers will be better in the long run. Maybe there's, there's a point. I, I remember way back in time, um, I was in uh, New Hampshire for a number of years. And every other summer, I would go to a, an away meet with our group. And our groups would go somewhere. And then on the other summers, we would just focus. We, we'd have a training trip. Or we'd bring in other teams to train with us on various weekends. Mm -hmm. And the only meets we decided to go to in those summers were the championship meets in our LSC and then the national meets. And, and without a doubt, those summers were more successful than worrying about going to a big meet in season where maybe you want to rest a little and suit up. And, and I also thought that the training carried over to the next season as well. So, you know, in the long run, maybe this environment that we're enduring in the present time doesn't seem to be so great. But I, I think in the long run, it could help us a lot if we focus on the right things. Yeah. Well, and, and this is the perfect time to do some videotaping, to be able to work technique, to get the drills correct and, and that type of stuff without, you know, having to worry. Um, how much, uh, while we're thinking about that type of thing too, how much, if any, you know, resisted, resistive training do you do do you do parachutes do you do buckets yeah um you know i'm gonna say we probably do that more with our sprinters than anything so uh we do have buckets um i'm gonna say buckets are probably just once a week at most right um when we do stroke lane days uh we will we do have parachutes and we'll do a little circuit so maybe lane eight is where the buckets are lane seven is where we we'll use parachutes Lane six will be, uh, I think, some, you know, kicking. And then lane five, if we have four lanes going with our sprint group, um, they'll be doing some time swims. And we rotate through those lanes um, given the amount of time that we're using. And um, I think that really does help. Now, I don't overly use the buckets. Uh, in the beginning when we got them, we ran a, in the beginning of the season, we ran a big circuit so everybody could try it. And then I had a bunch of people who really don't belong doing that kind of work saying, <laughs> I never want to do that again. Good. I'm not going to let you go over there and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> go be an IM or go be a backstroke or whatever. Um, so, well, we let everybody try it and then and people realize that that's not who they are, you know, and, and we save it for the people that we think are going to be a little bit more on the sprinty side. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think when they get to college, I think we're, you know, all of that is just an introduction at the high school level. When they get to college and they have amazing equipment that, are, you know, and every school has, you know, what they believe in. Um, I know there's a few examples that I really like, and, and I'm a little biased here, but I really do like the, the IU plan. I like what they do. They have their pulley system. They have their um, mirrors on the bottom of the pool. They, they have the TiVo going so that they can actually see what they've just done up so on the I, scoreboard. They have it all branched out too. Absolutely it's amazing. So, and I, I suppose that, you know, a lot of other schools have different things that they really believe in and like to use. Um, but I think for, for our purposes at the high school level, it's just an introduction. You know, we run morning practices uh, because we think it's good, you know, for the prelim final scenario that they're going to be in, in championships, but also because they're, they're going to need to do that and more at the collegiate level. Yeah. Do you, um, and we're, if anyone has any questions, please ask, cause we're getting close to the end of the, our, our time limit, but, um, how much videotaping uh, of underwater, you know, technique do you do on a regular basis or on a, on on a, a seasonal day, basis? It's probably not a very regular basis. I'll be honest with you. We do have an underwater camera. Uh, we have used that in the past for clinics more mm -hmm. than anything. Um, so on a regular basis, we can get a TiVo, uh, not a TiVo, I'm sorry, <laughs> a GoPro, mm -hmm. right? And we can use, we can use that. Um, underwater, we probably should, I'll be honest with you, we probably should do more of that kind of work. Um, I'll do some things. If I, if I see something that really needs to be corrected, I simply just break out my phone and do some surface videotaping. But yeah, we probably is, need to do more of that. Yeah, that, 
Right. It just, that's really simple to do. Um, but I think, you know, having the GoPro, putting that underwater and letting kids see that is really valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I think so too. And it, it's so hard to find the time to do it. It is. And it depends it is, yeah. on how many assistants you have and, and it depends on all of that. It's really tough to find the time, but I think it is important to try to find that time. Right. right. Um, for everybody. So um, I, any, any last few things you'd like to talk about, whether it's uh, Reagan in, in particular or about opening now or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think in terms of opening, you know, having patience is really important. I mean, I, I know the kids probably felt the first few days was really boring. I mean, they hadn't been in the pool for 10 to 12 weeks, depending on who they were. Sure. And it was a long time. And, they, and I said, I know this is going to feel awkward. Give yourself some time to get a, you know, a feel for the water again. Um, let's do all the drills. Let's do, I said, skills are going to be really, really hard to come by in the beginning for some of you. Okay. While you're, while you're getting in shape, make sure that you're maintaining skills on a daily basis. So really simple, right? Great streamlines, great, you know, efficient turns, great finishes, all those little things that you want to have down, do that from the very beginning. And then we can put some training and some speed behind it eventually. Yeah. I think those are uh, good words of wisdom. Um, so really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know you're swamped. <laughs> you, you've got everything so much going on uh, over there. So really appreciate you taking the time with us. And I hope it was valuable for the people that were watching. And good luck with uh, not only Reagan, but your whole team, because you do such a great job. Right. Kevin, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And it's really good. All those uh, details are really good. I think it can help a lot of people if you break down your training and, and you work in different areas um, on a daily basis. It can help your swimmers for sure. Yeah, I think so too. All right. So thank you very much. And uh, thanks for logging on, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye. Are we good?